for joining us for our first Leading Edge Q&A session. We're really excited to bring you this new topic in our forum. We're going to start using this page to do a lot of exciting interactive things, so please check back often. One of the things we're going to do in September is we're going to do a Q&A and we're going to run a contest with it, so stay tuned for that. So I had to limit the questions down to about five different questions. I kind of grouped together questions that you had sent in this week that were similar to try to answer as many questions as possible. Um, so if I didn't get to your question this week, keep at it. I'll definitely do it next week. We're gonna be doing this every Wednesday. So you can send your questions however you like. You can email me, you can uh, instant message, you can do it on the Facebook page. You can send it by smoke signal. You can tell me at a dog show, whatever you like. I'm gonna to try to answer as many questions as I possibly can. So here we go. So one of the first questions I had and to me, this was a super interesting question, and it was from Tammy, and it was about how do I find a mentor at dog shows? You know, so Tammy went on to explain a little bit more like that she feels like she's doing all the right things, that she goes to dog shows, and you know, she's a nice person, and she talks to a lot of people, and she just can't really find anybody willing to mentor her. So Tammy, and everybody else out there, I'm gonna tell you this. Part of the reason we started Leading Edge Dog Show Academy was the lack of mentorship. And I don't think that there's anyone to blame for that. I think that it's kind of nature of the beast of what's been happening at dog shows. So dog show entries have gone down, right? There used to be 60 standard poodles or 40 Afghan hounds or 65 Irish setters at every dog show. And now there's three or five or 12 or on a really, really huge weekend, there might be 60. So we're going to the point where we just don't have as many people at the dog shows. So therefore, naturally, the amount of people available to be your mentor has greatly declined. The other problem is, is that because the classes are so short, you know, if there's only five standard poodles, then that's 10 minutes to offer somebody advice. You know, I was really lucky to grow up at dog shows in a time where the entries were huge, so even if you just stood with your breeder and watched an entry, you could discuss a class for 10 or 15 minutes and that gave you a big insight. So Tammy, I don't really think you're doing anything wrong. I think that there's really lack of mentors out there and again, through no fault of their own, you know, and people are much busier these days. You know, everybody has all these extracurricular activities with their children or their grandchildren, and that just leads to less time. So Tammy, just keep soaking up all the information you can. And remember that, you know, I am here to help mentor you and to help push you in the direction of finding a mentor when we think that that might be available to you. So I don't think it's anything you're doing wrong. I think that you need to rely on Leading Edge to get some of that mentorship. And you know, just keep at it, just keep asking questions, being nice, realizing that there just isn't really the time anymore to discuss the things that we want to discuss at dog shows. So thanks, Tammy, that was an awesome question. Um, my next question comes from Jana. And again, this is another question I get asked a lot. Um, so she says that her dog gets really bored during lead practice. He pulls away, he won't speed up when she wants him to, and she's used all different kinds of bait. She's used chicken, liver, all, and with no success at all. So first of all, stop practicing. That's one of the biggest things we do wrong is that we get our dogs doing something really well and because we're excited that they do it so well, we keep practicing it until the point that they're bored and they don't want to do it anymore. And I honestly think, Jana, like you can send me a video on the Facebook page and I'm happy to look at it, but I honestly think that's a problem. I think that your dog's just bored, so do not practice with it anymore. That's one of the worst things that you can do. So uh, the next time you have lead practice time, just put your dog on a totally different lead. Put it on like a walking lead, take it out, throw a ball, just do something so it, and just run. Run as fast as you can from one side of the yard to the other. Let it gallop and jump and play and just really enjoy having that time with you. Uh, coincidentally, we're releasing a new course today called Positive Reinforcement for the Dog Show. So it's all about training your dog for the dog show. And honestly, these are the methods that I have used with great success to teach my dog to run out at the end of the lead, to stand on its own on a lead when being presented to the judge. So really take a look at that. It has a lot of tips, including one of my favorites for getting your dog to pull out on the lead, and that's using target training. So again, uh, positive reinforcement for the show dog. Please take a look at that course coming out today. 
Um, Misha basically had the same question. She has a dog that lags back all the time on the, la on the leash. So Misha, I want you to do the same thing. I want you to just put a leash on that dog that is not a show leash and I want you to act like an idiot. Like I want you to like run, jump, play, laugh, cry, throw a tennis ball, throw a teddy bear, whatever your dog's favorite, favorite thing is, throw a stick. We had a great, great interaction and I'll post that video on the page as well with uh, Christy at one of my recent seminars where she couldn't get her dog to move with its head or tail up. And literally we picked up a stick off the ground and her dog went completely insane, completely changed how it moved for this. So we called the stick the magic wand. And I told her, You're, that dog is never allowed to see that stick except for in the show ring until you have got, you know, what you, you're accomplished, you've accomplished your goal, then you can stop using that stick. Um, Jennifer, Jennifer, uh, Jennifer's question's a little bit harder and it requires you to be a bit of a tougher person. I do have a blog post on bullying at dog shows, and this isn't exactly bullying, but it can kind of get that way. So Jennifer's question is, what do you do about people that come in the ring and they crowd you or run over you, or they have their dog crowd you or run over you? So the three things that, that you can do is you can just ask them, just say, hey, my dog is is really new, could you please just give me some extra room? And say it loud enough that either somebody at ringside or um, another exhibitor ahead of you or behind you can hear it. So that, you know, they're kind of called out on the fact that you did ask for some extra room. Um, the next thing that you can do, which is a little bit harder, but I have done it, is I've just gone to the ring steward and I've just said, could you ask the exhibitor behind me to give me more room? Now, that's a little more extreme and it's a little harder because you have to like put yourself out there and actually do it but it does work, like they don't crowd you anymore. Um, and the third thing, which some people think puts you at a disadvantage, I disagree, um, and most judges will let you do it. If I'm in a, in a position where I think my dog is gonna be crowded and is gonna act negatively towards that, is I'll get in the ring and then, in, you know, in catalog order when I'm called, and then I'll go to the ring steward and I'll say, could you please ask the judge if I could go to the end of the line? And you can say, you know, my bitch is just coming in season or just coming out of season, or my dog had, had a, has had a bad experience in the past. And I've had a lot of success with that. Like, I think I've only had one time where the judge said, no, stay in line. And I mean, at that point, what are you gonna do? There's nothing you can do. But yeah, uh, Jennifer, I think that that is a really common problem. And you do just have to stick up for yourself. Like that's one of those things that you um, really have to, to stick out. Um, I was asked again, what is the most common mistake that I think that new people make at dog shows? So the most common mistake, and I have addressed this in my beginning handling course, is you're not prepared. You're not prepared. You have no idea when you're going in the ring. You don't have your dog ready to go in the ring. Uh, maybe you do, maybe you're standing at ringside, but you're sipping a latte or you're talking to your friends and you get in the ring totally distracted. Your dog walks in the ring pacing, you're fixing your lipstick. So the biggest thing you can do, the biggest mistake new people make is they don't have a plan. They don't have a plan for getting outside the ring to inside the ring. So please have your dog on a wet towel 10 minutes before ring time. Have yourself in that zen moment where you know you've watched the classes before you. You know when you walk in the ring, whether you're the first dog or the third dog in line, exactly where you're gonna stop with that dog. Be prepared. Watch what the other classes have done before you. That's free instruction. They are basically telling you what is expected of you. So, I mean, if you have an Airedale junior puppy male that's in the ring at 8 a.m., I'm sorry that I said that, you're on your own. But the rest of you, you have a lot of time to see what the judge expects of you and give them their expectations. That's one way to get a, a foot up. Um, so the last question I'm gonna answer today is uh, kind of a simple one. It's about dentition. So again, Jennifer was concerned about judges like looking at the bites of basically every dog in the ring and passing potential germs or worse from one dog to another. So um, Jennifer, because of the recent outbreak of canine flu, um, I know that the American Kennel Club and Canadian Kennel Club have both instructed their judges groups to ask the exhibitor to show the bite themselves. So be prepared to show the bite yourself and what I do, especially if I think it's a, a foreign judge that maybe didn't get that memo, or maybe it's a new judge that's nervous, or you see the judge in other classes looking at the bite themselves for whatever reason, is 
when the judge walks up to my dog, the first thing I do is show them the bite. I just automatically show them the bite before they ask, before they do anything else. And if they say something or if they go to look at it, that gives you time because now you've put it out there. Like you've basically said, I'm showing you the bite. What are you going to do about it? And not in a rude way, just like, here it is. And then if the judge says something, just say, oh, yes, I know. I'm just very concerned about cross-contamination. I just wanted you to see everything. And if they ask you to show it again, then happily show it again. Like, maybe they weren't prepared for you to show the bite right at that moment. But that is how I have dealt with the situation. Usually what I do is I watch the classes ahead of me, and I really watch to see if the judge is looking at the bite themselves or asking the exhibitor. And if they are checking themselves, um, then I, that's what I do. As soon as the judge walks up, I just show the bite. And I'm really excited about doing this every week. So again, send me your messages, send me your questions. Uh, there is no question that is you know, too silly for me to answer. I love them all. I learn as much from you when you ask the questions as you learn from me. And stay tuned because in September, we're gonna have a great contest that goes along with this Q&A. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you soon. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Please give us a like. And if you haven't already done so, you can subscribe to our channel below. Also, check out leadingedgedogshowacademy.com for our premium content. We had a lot of fun bringing you all this information. See you soon. Bye.